Bet First Man 2 now, live on Indiegogo. All right, let's look at volume two of the Illustrated Comic Art Workshop by Dick Giorgiano and Frank McLaughlin with John Byrne, Mort Walker, Bill Hoist, Dick Brown, Mel Kassin, Stan Drake, Frank McLaughlin. And I will admit, as a kid, some of those comic strip artist names I wasn't familiar with, but I am now. So we start here, a uh, little introduction, of course, go right into Stan Drake, and they talk about Stan Drake. So this talks about Stan and uh, some of his career, and then it shows some of his artwork. Uh, I love seeing, I love seeing this as a kid, the, the rough that he did for the strip, and then you can see the final. Um, Stan was known for taking photographs and then photocopying them to get that real high contrast. And then he would go back in with ink and whiteout to uh, touch them up. There's a lot more reading to this book than in the other one. Uh, the importance of expression, great expressions by Stan. More expressions in the pencils to a Juliet Jones, Heart of Juliet Jones strip. Love Stan's inking. Uh, Neil Adams got a lot of his inking technique from Stan, which you can see, if I remember correctly, a lot of this was inked with, a, I think it's a Jalot 290, which is a very flexible point. You get a picture. Look at that dude. I could, I should grow my hair back and shave my uh, goatee and I could be Stan Drake. Uh, Mel Casson, he talks about penciling the humorous comic strip. Like I said, I wish there was more art in this, you know, how to draw type stuff. But, you know, it gives you some cool things like the sizes that different guys draw their comic strips. Dick Brown, uh, known for Hagar, I believe, worked 11 and a half by 3 and an eighth. Johnny Hart, who did BC, was 17 and a half by four and three quarters. Mort Walker, Be Beetle Bailey artist, 13 by four. You know, shows the lettering guides and stuff. You know, it goes over materials and then penciling. Like I said, this book is definitely a lot more writing. I mean, you see some things like a thumbnail sketch here, which is cool. And then the final inks here. I just wish in this there was more... Uh, more showing instead of telling. You know, if you're doing an art book, show me, don't tell me. Uh, you know, talking about a light box. I mean, they definitely talk about key things that are very important to it. But, you know, once again, I'd like to see more art. Uh, Mort Walker showing a rough sketch for Beetle Bailey. Tightening it up. I love cartoony stuff like this. Just love it. And in the finished strip, he says he inked it with a Jalot 170, which is kind of a flexible point, if I remember correctly. Uh, Dick Brown and Bill Hoist. Probably not pronouncing that right. Uh, Bud Blake, somebody I'm not familiar with. Wasn't back then and uh, still really not today. Um, but the good thing about reading all this is they talk about the tools they use which is important. And they talk about the thought process. So, I mean, sometimes when I do live streams, it's just me talking about tools and thought process and not really showing. So you can still learn from that. Boomer, uh, Dick Brown boy host, and Bud Blake and I go through approximately the same process in penciling, uh, thumbnail sketches. Yeah, Boomer's another guy that I'm just... Uh, the artist I'm not familiar with. And then uh, for some reason, Mel gets the spotlight there with the picture. John Byrne talking about storytelling and comics. So this is cool. This was definitely a fun one to read. He goes into some storytelling stuff. I love this because this is do's and don'ts. This is, this is uh, not great. I mean, you know, every rule can be broken. So you could do this in a panel. And have dialogue over here, you know, and it's like, oh, as Superman is entering the city. I mean, it's just boring. You know, this, if you had uh, speed lines flying off the back of his legs, would show that he's leaving. Uh, this isn't good. 
either uh, because it looks like he's, well, one, he's centered. You don't want him centered in the panel. His figure is centered. And two, it looks like he's mounted on top of this building. So not good. But he basically goes through and says the wrong stuff. Uh, here, he's basically saying this guy looks like a giant compared to her, even though just looking at this rough sketch John did, I can tell that he's in the air floating above her. Uh, let's see, in figure four, Cap is also nicely clear of panel borders, and he flies into the air away from his faithful companion to Brenda, but it, is he really flying? If you never read the Adventures of Cap in example, you might just for a moment wonder if he's become a giant or if Brenda has shrunk. I mean, this is where there's no background. He just did a grid, but if you indicated background details properly, and then if you threw a little shadow off of her and then took a shadow off of him really small down here, you'd know that he's in the air. Now, this one is totally... I, one, I love the sketch of this figure because you can see how John Byrne roughs in a figure quickly. This is a bad crop. You know, you don't crop at the wrist. You don't crop at the feet like that. So it's just about bad cropping. Uh, this one, Byrne breaks all the time, which is funny to me because he says not to, but Byrne has people standing on panel borders a lot. And I don't know if he ever has people leaning on him. So you definitely don't want somebody leaning on a border, especially considering he's not in the right perspective because this is the wall. And if this is the wall, there's no way he could be leaning on this border. But drawing people on the border, saying that this is like the eye level, horizon line right here, yeah, there's nothing really wrong with that. Lots of people do that. Now, centering her head right in the middle of a light like that, that's bad. Uh, this is showing, you know, you got to keep things the same. So he's opening the door here, but then here, the door opens the different way. So you just have to pay attention to stuff like that when you're going from one scene to the next. This is breaking the 180 degree rule. She's on the left. He's on the right. He's looking or she's looking to the uh, to the right as we're looking at it to him. And now all of a sudden she's looking off in the other direction. Now, this would work if he's if she's like, but Captain Example, look over there. And then she's looking in a totally different direction. But if she's still supposed to be looking at him, he's not over here. He's over here. So this panel should be flipped. <laughs> Uh, figure 11 here. Look at this. He mentions Jim Starling or Neil Adams, Michael Golden. I got to reread this. I haven't read this stuff in forever. Man. Uh, figure 11. They didn't really do a great job. Uh, look at figure 11, and it's all the way over here. Uh, he's talking about the tilt of the room and if there's a good reason for it. I mean, tilted shots add some drama. I don't mind this. I did read somewhere, and I don't think it was here, that if you tilt a panel, you should tilt to the right, so the opposite, so the lines would be going this way, the verticals, so you tilt to the right, not the left, because for some reason that makes it more dramatic, whereas to the left is just kind of unsettling. I can't remember where I read that. I don't mind that, though. I mean, if you cast some real big shadows and stuff in here, it would just look dramatic. Uh, this one is we read left to right, not right to left. So you'd want to flip this so you get the sense of motion of him going this way. This kind of stops the eye. You don't really get the sense of motion. Not quite sure what the problem is with the handshake in 13. Let's see what he says. Let's illustrate a simple, boring, two guys shaking hands and illustrate the two most extreme ways not to do it. It's not quite so wrong. As 14, you can start with a tight shot in a situation like this. If you're planning to pull back to that establishing shot sometime in the immediate future, say within two panels. Ugh. I mean, that doesn't bother me. I mean, he's talking about, I guess, the order of storytelling. But even still, you could do this as panel one, and then this is panel two. Or you could do this as panel one, and this is panel two. You could do this as panel one. This is panel two. This is panel three. I do love seeing this. Burns sets up a grid like this for all his panels before he starts drawing. 
It really helps you ground things and place objects. Remember, storytelling, clarity, clarity, clarity. And then here's some examples of burned stuff. I remember seeing this as a kid. I actually have these fantastic four issues. Uh, this is me. Th to me, this is peak John Byrne when he was inking his own work. This is just gorgeous stuff. I love his tech that he would do. His buildings. Just gorgeous. I wish there was a Fantastic Four Essential Edition. Those black and white that Marvel did collecting a lot of issues of burn stuff when he was inking himself. But he's just talking about different shots and the importance of them and stuff. Uh, this was actually inked by Joe Sennett. Love this. These stock buildings, just love it. You know, this New York. This is, of course, John Inkin himself. Just the way he did textures and stuff was so nice. Uh, and then we're talking to Frank McLaughlin. I think Frank is talking about cartooning here, which, you know, I know Frank for more of his inking work in uh, regular superhero comics. Uh, he's talking about caricature, basically. So there's the photo of the guy, and he's doing caricatures of him. So that's cool, you know. Talking about how to do caricatures. Dick Giordano, the artist is narrator, or tell me a story, please. Uh, this has some great information in it. Uh, talking about, as the artist, is you're a director, you're a cameraman, you're a costume designer, a set designer, a producer, casting, lighting, researcher, prop master. Everything, if you want to draw comics, that you're expected to do. You know, I've said before, if you're an architect, you draw buildings, you design buildings. You don't have to worry about people and camera angles and stuff, costume designs, things like that. A comic artist has to do it all. Great shot of Batman. Uh, Dick Giordano is definitely, uh, art style-wise, a protege in a way of Neil, even though he was older than Neil and uh, in the business longer than Neil. Uh, art style wise, you can see a lot of Neil's work and uh, Dick Giordano's work. These are some of Dick's pencils here. He's talking about the camera movement. I love seeing this stuff. I love seeing Dick's pencils as well. I wish these were better because it'd be fun to be able to scan these in but uh, and ink them. But I love like full pencils these days don't look like this. People that do full pencils now are so much tighter and the inker is almost a tracer. Whereas back then the inker really had to know what they were doing to embellish and, uh, and add texture and stuff. I don't know what this is from. I don't think it says I'd like to find this or maybe he did this just for this book, but this is great. She's crawling out, crawls out, jumps down. Hangs, jumps, hits the ground. Just really cool. I don't know what, you know what? This has got to be something that was printed. I need to find out what this stuff was from. Now he's talking about leading the eye through the page, which is very cool. It's something that Joe Kubert really talked about and I try to talk about as well as leading the reader around the page. Man, I really don't know what this is from. I got to try and find that. Just skimming the page to see if it says, but from what I can see, he's not saying what this is from. I don't think it's like a Batman story or anything. I don't know. I love this. When I was a kid, I loved this. Seeing his rough pencils and then the final pencils here. This would be fun, and the only way I could scan it properly is if I cut the page out from the book, which I won't be doing. Um, but the only thing you could do here, I'd love to be able to get a nice clean scan of this, send this to Inkers, and see what Inkers can do over top of it, because this would be great. It's not soup, it's tight, everything's there, but there's still a lot of room for interpretation when it comes to inking. I love seeing the breakdowns here of uh, Dick's art and the breakdown stage. 
one point perspective. He's got him walking towards us. Background doesn't change. That's kind of cinematic. Just gorgeous. Mel Griffinger, drawing comics for TV. And he's talking about storyboards. This book even has some, some talk of storyboards. Goes into the equipment that was used back then. Storyboards now are all done with the storyboard program. And you're drawing digitally. I mean, some can still be done by hand, but I think a lot are done uh, digitally. Talks about using markers, different textures and stuff. Drawing the figure. Uh, talks about backgrounds, continuity, and then uh, the reference file, the morgue file, where you would clip things out. Uh, people, you know, back in the day before Google Images and the computer, you'd have a morgue file where you'd get magazines and you would just clip photographs from magazines and stuff and you'd have a folder of just cars, different cars, uh, different buildings, different sports. I mean, the great thing is there's more magazines now than there different types of magazines now that there were back then. But even back then, there were a lot of different magazines you could get for to clip photos out for reference. I wish this was in color because this was a marker comp and it'd be great to see the layering of the marker and stuff done in color. But, oh well. So that is, uh, that, is that book, the comic, the Illustrated Comic Art Workshop Volume 2. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh... I'll talk to you guys later. Back, First Man 2 Learning Curve, live on Indiegogo. Luke Henry, after kicking Monarch's ass to the depths of space, is back on Earth. And now, he's looking to save the world from the Fourth World Foundation. Sure, he had help from a number before, but she's not helping him this time. He's got to face it on his own. He's coming for a villain known as Adonis. He'll do it, he'll be there, Back it now. First man to learn it.